Welcome back to Brownlow Books. Uh, I did my first nonfiction of the year, a hold that I have been pushing back since like September, October of last year. <laughs> yes, so I did my first nonfiction of the year, which is Counting the Cost by Jill Duggar, Derek Dillard, and Craig Borlase. Borlase? Borlase? I don't know. You know, they're ghostwriter kind of guy, <laughs> right? So, I have never watched a single fucking second of the, any of those goddamn Duggar shows ever in my entire fucking life. Actually, I think in university, there might have been a clip from one of the very early specials shown. So I have a, I have a minor in religion and culture. Atheist. All right. So, yes, it might seem odd that I have read this book, but... I watched Shiny Happy People and became fucking obsessed. I have also kind of watched, you know, the elder one, Josh, fuck up over the years, which has always been a delight and also horrifying. So, I read Jill Duggar's little memoir thing. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it because, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a fan, so I don't have, like, the, oh my god, like, conspiracy kind of things or whatever. Um... I do, I do wish that she had, like, more and deeper thoughts about deconstructing her religious beliefs under what is the I, I B, IBLP or whatever it is. Letters. Uh, <laughs> you know, she kept talking about the umbrella, the umbrella, the umbrella. And I'm like, okay. And? Like, there's a lot fucking more than, like, the umbrella of control that your family has over you, like. So, so there was a couple times where I was just, like, one, name names, <laughs> and two, just touch deeper. And, like, the first time she wore pants, I was like, great. <laughs> and then she, like, pierces her nose, and I'm like, ooh, all right, we're getting some rebellion here. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I wish there was a little bit more of a breakdown of, like, other aspects deeper aspects of, like, how, how this religion has affected her in her life. Um, all the talk about the missionary work and how it's, like, God's calling and shit, I was just, like, I have very, very strong feelings about missionary work because it is usually these young kids who are fucking evangelicalized, like, there is, there is some deep-seated shit there, and they're like 17, 18, 19, you're sending them out into the world literally for the first time. Like, some of them have never even, like, seen a fucking movie before. Like, it is deep shit, all right? And like, oh, I'm just gonna send them to a whole nother country where they're gonna go talk to a bunch of people that no one knows and, like, tell them that they're going to hell if they don't follow their religion. Big fucking feelings about missionary work, all right? Yeah, like... Oh, your kid gets to see the see the world. Yeah, but like, no. And also, do they understand literally anything happening in it? Big, big fucking feelings. All right. Um. Also, did she just out her dad for tax fraud? <laughs> when when do I see the news report about that? Oh wait, I don't because I'm in Canada. Right, right. My bad. <laughs> um. Whew. That, just, like, talking about, like, dad owes me this money. He said I made this money, but, like, I never saw a cent of that money. And I'm just, like, I knew that this, a lot of this was what that was about, was about the fucking money. But, like, just fucking laying it out bare that, like, yeah, dad told the IRS I made this amount of money and I didn't make a cent is big. <laughs> so, yeah, this book on Goodreads has 73,000 ratings comes out to a 4.19 stars, which is very good. But I imagine a lot of those are, you know, people who enjoy the show, enjoyed watching her grow up. Such, such a creepy, I don't, mm -mm. it's creepy. I don't even like fucking like influencers that use their kids. Like if someone sends me a fucking reel that has children in it, I'm like, can you fucking not? Like it feels fucking creepy. I do not like it. All these little like baby models. I'm like, fuck no, it's fucking creepy. So imagine doing that on fucking national television. That is fucking weird. I mean, there's a whole bunch of shit about their religion that is also fucking weird. But I'm just focusing right now on literally growing up on TV. 
I I would not wish that on my worst enemy. Like every little thing is is captured and caught and lives on forever. And I'm just nah <laughs> nah. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, I mean, despite not being a fan of the family at all or watching a single bit of the show, I, I enjoyed reading it. It was interesting. It was interesting to get the dirt after watching Shiny Happy People. <laughs> I liked that dirt. I'm a, I'm a fan of documentaries, even if I have no interest in what they're talking about. I, I watched one on fucking oil extraction in the north. Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It was a fine way to spend three hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> I read it on Libby. It told me at the end and I went, oh. Also, also, not related directly to the book, but it automatically came in that dyslexic font where it looks kind of like the letters are thick at the bottom and thin at the top and they have extra spacing between the lines. And I was just like, this is so easy to read. <laughs> I hate how it looks when I'm looking at it, but once I'm reading it, it just kind of like goes away and it was so easy to read. That's probably why it was only three hours and 45 minutes for me to read this whole book. And I'm just like, am I dyslexic? <laughs> I mean, I know I have dyscalculia, but like, I didn't think I was dyslexic. Maybe it's just easier for everyone to read. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> but yeah, it caught me off guard that it automatically came like that. And then how easy it was to actually read. So, <laughs> it's time to say goodbye. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you around next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.